Designing microservices is hard. Making them communicate is even harder. And I'm sure you don't need me to tell you about it. And there's a lot of content on this subject. I myself have published a ton of videos on microservice communication. Bro, I, I can't see. Thank you. I think we've had enough of theory. It's time we check out a tool to make all of this a whole lot easier. We need a tool which we can adopt today. It's time we look at Dapper. So what is Dapper? Well, Dapper is a distributed application runtime. It's just a fancy way of saying that it's a framework of sorts which provides us with some really neat building blocks to make working with microservices a whole lot easier. The thing is, microservices are nothing but a bunch of patterns. You know, patterns to communicate, to configure, to deploy. The problem exists in the number of tools and approaches that we need to consider to implement these patterns. That's where the learning curve stems from. Dapper helps us overcome these challenges by creating an abstraction over all these moving pieces. What it gives us is a single Appified library to rule them all out. Appified library? Wow, that's gonna be a difficult one to explain. Okay, so whenever we use a library or SDK, we essentially use the methods it exposes. We don't really care about how that method is implemented as long as it gets the job done. But these days, programming languages are evolving rapidly. It's not possible to make and maintain an SDK for each language. Trust me, I've tried. So instead of doing that, Dapper has created a server which acts as a library. And that server exposes a bunch of APIs which are its methods. So instead of packing a library within your app, you now ship your application along with the Dapper server as your sidecar. Let's just take a moment to appreciate what all of this means. Two points. First, Dapper abstracts away all these tools and patterns. We're talking PopSub, RPC, storage, and whatnot. Second, the only thing we need to worry about is calling simple REST APIs. In other words, if I understand how to use REST, I can potentially leverage everything Dapper supports. That's insane. So the Dapper architecture will look something like this, at least in the context of Kubernetes. Dapper will be deployed as a sidecar alongside all our applications. Whenever an app wants to talk to another app or publish an event, it will call the appropriate API on Dapper. Dapper would now be responsible to discover the target app or broker and pass on the message. Irrespective of the pattern you want to leverage, the general flow will always be the same. Just call a Dapper API on localhost. Okay, all of this is still theory. Let's do something interesting. Let's look at some actual use cases and see how powerful Dapper really is. The first building block we look at is our standard service-to-service -service invocation. You know, calling an endpoint on an upstream service. Even the seemingly easy task isn't that straightforward when you dig deeper into it. I mean, first there's the issue of automatically retrying in case of errors. Then you need to worry about security. How do you verify if the one making the API call is authorized to talk to you? And lastly, how do you track all of this? The last question is actually a big one. Distributed traces and the golden signals of monitoring are absolutely necessary for any microservice-based application. Normally, the onus of implementing these practices is put on developers. It's always the developers. But seriously, all of this is a lot of hard work. I'd rather focus on developing my application than do all of this. Dapper helps us out here. Instead of calling the upstream service directly, we can call the invoke API on Dapper. Dapper will be responsible to route the request via the sidecars. And since all the requests now flow through Dapper, it can literally take care of everything we've discussed till now. We don't have to worry about anything. The best part is that I don't need to modify my upstream API when using Dapper. So if this was my upstream API, I'll have to fire this request on Dapper. Dapper has just one expectation from us, a header indicating the application we want to route this request to. How cool is that? The next building block is PopSub messaging. This is pretty close to my heart since it enables event-driven architectures. And boy, do I love eventing. PopSub messaging can get tricky really quick. First, you have the problem of choosing the right messaging broker. And this isn't a static decision. You may want to start with Redis thanks to its simplicity, but as soon as you hit a certain scale, you may want to move on to a more scalable solution. Or maybe you want to choose something lightweight for local development, but want to use a managed cloud offering in production. These are all valid use cases. The problem here is that learning how to integrate with a broker is a time-consuming process. It's extremely error-prone. 
one small mistake on your part can make you lose all the strong delivery guarantees you may require. Dapper helps us out here as well. First, it has integrated with a ton of brokers and has exposed it to us via a standardized API. In other words, you can now swap out your broker without changing a single line of code. Next, its API is completely REST-based, including the subscription model. Publishing is as simple as calling a REST endpoint. Subscription is similar as well. Dapper will invoke an API on your app whenever there's a message for you. Isn't this incredible? And it doesn't end here. Dapper allows you to limit the max concurrency your app can handle. It also supports dead letter queues even though the underlying broker doesn't. Wow, I got goosebumps just saying that. You guys should definitely check out my video on event-driven communication if you want to know more about why Dapper pops up is so awesome. Link to it in the description below. And while you're down there, smash that like button. It really helps the channel. Dapper has got a ton of more features. It supports distributed locking, config management, and even some aspects of storage. But the last feature I want to highlight is none of that. Instead, let's talk about actor-based concurrency. For those who are new to this, actor-based concurrency involves using objects or actors which talk to each other via message passing. It's an extremely scalable way of writing applications. It's the same stuff which tools like Arca and Erlang are based on. Dapper gives us a runtime which implements the virtual actors pattern. This way you can get all the advantages of the actor model while Dapper takes care of the major heavy lifting. Do check out the Dapper docs to give this feature a spin. Trust me, there will be no looking back from this one. Now comes the big question, should you use it? Short answer, hell yes. Dapper is absolutely amazing. And I agree, Dapper does require you to make some changes in your application. But as we just saw, they are really tiny. Technically, you don't need to make any changes at all. You can start using Dapper for new features in your app and then incrementally adopt it once you're starting to see the value for yourself. That's what makes Dapper so elegant. The only complaint I have with Dapper is that the generic abstraction it offers may dally at the individual characteristics of certain tools. For example, Redis can be used as a store and a pub subsystem. It allows us to store data and publish a message atomically in a single transaction. This just won't be possible when using Redis via Dapper. Having said that, these use cases are extremely rare. We don't really need to worry about it. I strongly suggest you take Dapper for a spin. It's an amazing tool. And if you're a big fan of microservice networking, you should absolutely check out this video, which speaks about the different event-driven patterns you can use to turbocharge your microservices. Until then, don't forget, I am your tech bot. You're on YouTube and hopefully in real life.